Hey Stargazers, welcome back to another episode of Skywatch Wednesday. My name is Nick, I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago, Illinois. In today's episode, we'll be talking all about the sights in the fall sky, the stars, planets, and constellations, and other sights that you can see as you head outside and look up this fall. Now overall, it's turning out to be a bit of a planet parade this season, with all five naked eye planets visible before midnight for a good section of the fall. So head outside any clear evening in the early fall, and you can find the planet Saturn in the southeastern sky. It's rising higher and higher toward the south as the night goes on. By early December, it'll be due south around sunset, though it's getting a bit dimmer by then. It's in the constellation of Aquarius, which doesn't really have any notable bright stars, but that also means Saturn sticks out quite easily as the brightest object in that area of the sky. The one bright star seen beneath it in the southern sky is the star Fomalo, that's part of the southern fish, but Saturn will be a good deal brighter than that star during most of the fall. If you're hoping to get a telescopic view, the earlier in the fall the better, as Saturn will be closer to Earth. You'll want to wait until it is well above the horizon, though, and ideally at its highest in the south for the clearest view. Through a small backyard telescope, you should be able to see an amazing view of the globe of the planet surrounded by those beautiful rings. Although the rings will be quite a bit less obvious than in this image, which I took about three years ago. That's because every 15 years or so, our view of Saturn's rings from Earth is exactly edge on. So Saturn appears ringless for a short period of time. We're currently approaching such an occurrence, which will take place in March of next year, with them nearly edge on again in November. So catch those rings while you can. Jupiter is up next, rising almost four hours after sunset as the fall begins, but rising before sunset by the time winter arrives. It's quite a bit brighter than Saturn, and it's located this year amongst a lot of recognizable patterns in the sky. It spends the entire season in the horns of Taurus the Bull. Jupiter through a small backyard telescope is a fantastic view. No rings to be seen, but it's got that large globe and prominent cloud bands. And if you're lucky, you might even see the Great Red Spot, if it happens to be facing Earth when you're looking. The four Galilean moons as well, they're always nearby. You can easily see them with a backyard telescope, and even steadily held binoculars should be able to pick those moons out. The planet Mars is rising quite a bit later than Jupiter in the sky, and it'll be more of a feature in the winter sky, but it will be rising in the east by about 10 p.m. local time by early November. It's already fairly bright and a distinctly orange-red color, so well worth looking for if you're out a little bit later in the evening. Early November is also when the last two naked eye planets start becoming more visible, though they're going to be something to look for in the early evening after sunset. Venus hangs around in the twilight glow for the first month of fall, but starts to climb higher and higher in the western sky as we get closer to Halloween. It's very bright and will be very noticeable as the brightest point of light in the west. It continues climbing through the fall, and for most of the winter, it'll be visible for at least two hours after sunset. Much lower in the sky is the planet Mercury, which is always a challenge to see as it's always quite close to the sun. Your best chance will be about half an hour after sunset in mid-November. For a couple of weeks there, you'll have a chance to catch Mercury in the southwest immediately after sunset, Venus easily seen above it and to the left, and then Saturn due towards the southeast. About an hour later, Jupiter will rise, and then by 10 p.m. local time, Mars will peak over the horizon. So it's not quite a parade where you get to see all five naked eye planets right after sunset or before sunrise, but at least in this case, you can see all five over the course of an evening. It's kind of fun to go out there and keep track of the sky over that time and see those planets marching by. As far as stars and constellations go, this year my focus is going to begin with the constellation of Cassiopeia, the Queen. She's already about halfway up in the northeast as darkness falls in the early part of fall. The zigzag shape, or W of stars, is circumpolar from Chicago. That means Cassiopeia never sets from locations at Chicago's latitude or farther north, but in this time of the year, she's best placed for viewing. 
Rising just below Cassiopeia is the constellation of Perseus the Hero, and one of my favorite binocular sights is right in between the two. About halfway between them is what's called the Double Cluster, a pairing of two open star clusters that are about 7,500 light years away. These are visible in very dark skies as kind of a fuzzy blob to the naked eye. But binoculars or a telescope are going to show this as dozens and even hundreds of stars. To the east of Cassiopeia is her daughter Andromeda, the princess. This long constellation has two arcs of stars, and nestled in that arc toward Cassiopeia is another spot that will look like a dim, fuzzy patch in a dark sky to your naked eye. That is the Andromeda Galaxy. This faint, fuzzy patch that we see with the naked eye is just the bright central core of the galaxy. Through astrophotography, we can reveal the spiral arms of this amazing object. This is the closest large galaxy to the Milky Way, but it's still two and a half million light years away. Put another way, when you see this galaxy, either through binoculars or just with your eyes, the light you're seeing first left that galaxy two and a half million years ago. Under these constellations of Cassiopeia, Andromeda, and Perseus is a beautiful star cluster rising up called the Pleiades. This cluster of stars will be heading all the way to the top of the sky in the winter, but for now it's just starting to make an appearance in the evening. The Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters, is another open cluster of stars, like the double cluster we saw earlier. The brightest six or seven are easily seen with the naked eye, and binoculars or a telescope can reveal hundreds more. The whole cluster is moving through a cloud of interstellar dust, which results in a beautiful blue haze surrounding many of the stars. The Pleiades are part of the constellation of Taurus, the bull, which this year plays host to the bright planet Jupiter. So plenty of amazing highlights to look for in the fall sky this year, and many others to be discovered. So I hope you go outside and check it out for yourself. Go outside, look up at the beautiful fall sky. That's all we've got for you this episode. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel, and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Happy stargazing. We'll see you next time.